Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to continue our series on the Dell PowerEdge R740XD server. In this video, we're going to specifically focus on drives. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today. It's a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R740XD server. Do us a favor, if you find anything that helps in this video, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's hop in. Uh, this video will be specifically dedicated to drives for your R740XD server. We're gonna really be uh, specifically focused on your normal 2.5 inch, 3.5 inch drives. Uh, we're not gonna get too, too much into uh, M.2s or NVMe, uh, but we do plan on doing those later in the series. So, um, all right, we're gonna tell you in general what are the different types of drives that are compatible with the 740XD. We're gonna show you the max speeds and the max sizes for those drives. Then we're going to show you how to physically install them, which is super easy because they're hot swap. But we will show you the difference between the 3.5 inch and 2.5 inch, which is important. And then at the end, we're going to show you two tools that we like. Dell Diagnostics, which will test the uh, drives, but a lot of other stuff on your server as well. It'll test uh, really everything inside if you want it to. And then we're going to show you HD Sentinel, which is a nice standalone tool that we use uh, to test our drives health score and find the power on hours. So let's go ahead and just hop in. Well, what types of drives are compatible with my 740XD? Well, you have SAS hard drives, you have SATA hard drives, you have SAS solid state drives, and you have SATA solid state drives. So those are the types of compatible drives that we're gonna really focus and hone in on. And again, you can use M.2 and NVMe, and the NVMe is a whole solution with the right backplane, right cables. You cannot use NVMe in your just everyday uh, chassis. You have to have the right chassis, so I did wanna at least point that out. So, all right, with our SAS, hard drives, the max speed that you're gonna get is 15K, but you can put in 7.2 and 10K. So those are the three speeds that you can use for your SAS hard drives. Now with SATA hard drives, you're just really gonna get 7.2K, and that's the benefit of SAS over SATA on the hard drive side, is that you get the 10 and 15K speeds and they're faster, but I do wanna note, because they're faster, it is a mechanical device, the ball bearings are spinning so fast, they will wear out and they are prone to failure, so just know with the SAS hard drives, it's probably a good idea to have a, a spare on hand, because over time, they're definitely gonna fail for the hard drive side. So on the solid state drive side, with SAS, you can get 12 gigabit per second, whereas with SATA solid state drives, you can only get six gigabit per second. So that's the advantage of SAS as a whole on the solid state drive side is that it is faster, same general concept on the hard drive side too, but the SAS hard drive, or excuse me, the SAS solid state drives will cost a bit more than your uh, SATA solid state drives because they're faster. So, uh, but I will also note the SATA uh, solid state drives are a little bit more readily available and easier to get. So, all right, now that we know a little bit more about the, uh, the max speeds and the different types, let's go over the max sizes. And this is where it depends on the type of chassis you have. You can have your 24 bay, which is going to be a small form factor, two 5 inch chassis, or you could have the 12 bay, which is a large form factor 3.5 inch chassis. So let's start with the small form factor. So the max for your small form factor uh, chassis on the hard drive side for SAS is going to be 2.4 terabytes, and SATA hard drive is going to be 2 terabytes, whereas with a SAS or SATA solid state drive, you can get 7.68 terabytes, which is a nice uh, upgrade because not only is the solid state drive gonna be faster, better performing, you can actually put in more storage with the solid state drive. So it's definitely something I recommend for the small form factor chassis. Now with the large form factor chassis, the advantage of a large form factor is that you can buy uh, a really large hard drive for relatively cheap. So on a price per terabyte, uh, it's just a much, much better deal. You can shove in an 18 terabyte SAS hard drive according to Dell or a 16 terabyte SATA hard drive according to Dell. We've actually played around and we've put in 22 terabyte SAS and 20 terabyte uh, SATA hard drives and I'm sure in the future there'll be even uh, bigger sizes that will work so if you've put in something bigger drop a comment down below and everyone will like to hear about it. So um, now on the solid state drive uh, side it's going to be the exact same uh, 7.68 terabyte for SAS solid state drives and 7.68 terabytes uh, for SATA solid state drives. So that is the advantage. The large form factor is you can shove in big, big storage for cheap. That's the, the nice thing. And this is a storage box. So that's uh, something that will be used a lot in this, uh, this chassis as a whole. So, all right, now that we know a lot more about all the different uh, types, the, uh, the speeds, the sizes, let's show you how to physically install them. And then we'll show you how you do Dell Diag and HD Sentinel. Let's get going. All right, so I threw my ESD gear on since we're gonna be handling the parts. Right, so what we'll do here is we're gonna remove our old drive. So you just push the red circle. 
the latch will pop open and you will just slide your drive out, it'll come nice and easy. So this is an old uh, 900 gig drive. And uh, most time you hear those oddball sizes, 900 gig, 300 gig, 600 gig, 1.2, 2.4, those are gonna be your SAS hard drives. The uh, rounder sizes, your one terabyte, your two terabytes, those are your SATA drives. So uh, what we'll do is we're gonna install um, uh, our new solid state drive here. So you'll just come in and when it gets to this point, it'll, the bottom will hit here and you'll just push this up and it will lock into place and it'll clip in. So it's really just that easy of an install. Now the other thing I do want to point out is if you go to our website um, and you're looking to order solid state drives, but you do have the large form factor chassis, um, when you go to uh, check out, you have the choice of what kind of tray do you want. Do you want the 2.5 inch tray or do you want the 3.5 inch tray? And the 3.5 inch tray will come with the correct converter or the adapter here to be able to install your SSD. So again, we'll have this uh, set up on our site. So when you go to order uh, your upgrades from us, we'll make sure that you do get exactly what you need. So, all right, so now that we know how to do our install, let's go ahead and show you how to test with Dell Diagnostics and HD Sentinel. Hey guys, this has been the Cloud Ninjas, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to test your hard drives and solid state drives with Dell Diagnostics and HD Sentinel. So let's go ahead and get started. First, we're going to go ahead and get started with Dell Diagnostics. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and boot up your server. Once you boot up your server, you want to go ahead and press F10, um, and this will go ahead and bring us into the lifecycle controller. Once we're in lifecycle controller, we can go ahead and scroll down to where it says hardware diagnostics. And then we want to go ahead and click on run hardware diagnostics. And then you'll get this little warning right here. So it's just going to say it's going to take several minutes. So we can go ahead and accept that. Um, and this will load us into Dell Diagnostics. So actually getting into Dell Diagnostics and actually running the test is pretty simple. So we're just gonna let these tests run and these tests can say, take several minutes up to several hours. So go ahead and just wait this out. If you're familiar with 12th gen and 13th gen uh, Dell PowerEdge servers, um, you'll notice that this looks very, very different. In the 12th gen and 13th gen, you can actually see the different tests on the left-hand side of the screen um, and you have a lot more information on the middle of the screen. Um, and it's just a lot more simpler of a screen, but it's just gonna go ahead and run through all of these tests. Um, and at the bottom, you can kind of, you can pause these tests if you want. Um, and then you can also see like what test specifically is running at that current time, an estimate of how much time is left for that test. So like I said, these tests are gonna take a little bit of time. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward so once that final test has stopped running, it'll go ahead and stop. And then we will get a message that pops up on the screen that says success. So this means all of our tests have passed. Um, if you had any issues, then you would get an alternative message saying like, hey, these, these tests failed. Um, and at the very end here, we can actually view all of the information and all the different tests that were ran. Um, and this screen's a little bit more similar as to something we'd see on the 12th gen and 13th gen PowerEdge servers. But yeah, we can go through here, see all the test results for each individual test, uh, which is pretty neat. Uh, information about the system health, the configuration, um, and we can even go into the event log, which is pretty useful. So that is how we do uh, Dell Diagnostics and how we can test our hard drives, but also, you know, everything else in our system. And if you really want to see if your system is healthy, then go ahead and run Dell Diagnostics. It'll give you a lot of information if all the components are working the way that they should. So now I'm going to show you how to test your hard drives with HD Sentinel. Alrighty guys, so I have HD Sentinel pulled up right now and as you can see we currently have two drives plugged in. Uh, we have this installed into a storage array where we like to plug in multiple drives at a time so we can test those drives. HD Sentinel is an awesome tool because you can see things like the power on hours, which is great, especially when you're buying used equipment. You can see how long that, that drive has been in use. You don't want to be using drives that have been you know, heavily used because then you have a higher risk of drive failure. Um, and that's one of the reasons why HD Sentinel is such a cool tool. But as you can see, we can just go ahead and plug a drive into the array and it'll automatically 
populate within the software. Like I said, lots of information. It'll give you health scores of the drives. As you can see, the two we have up top, they have 100% health score, while the one at the bottom has a 99%. So all pretty good. So I hope you guys found this video useful. And if you did, go ahead, smash the subscribe and leave a like. If you're interested in purchasing a custom built server or you're looking to buy some drives, we do have plenty of those in stock. So you can go reach out to us at sales at cloudninjas.com, sales at cloudninjas.com.